And welcome back, everybody, to Handicap Hustle. I am Jim Bressel, your host. We are here, surprisingly, with Richard Frazier, who showed up to do the show today. I was a little concerned about that because we had a rough weekend. And uh, he's the only handicapper I know that, that comes and reports on how the weekend did, win or lose. He shows up. And we know that uh, handicappers can't always have a winning weekend, even though they all act like they did. They come up with some machination or lie about uh, how the weekend went to claim that they were a big winner every single week. Well, the truth is it's impossible to win every week. But Richard Frazier is a man of honor, and he is here to face the music and talk about his first 0-3 weekend of the year. But let me remind everybody before we get into this. In uh, Rich's defense, his record for the year still stands at nine and eight. That's a 53% winning percentage. And uh, if you're betting in Vegas, a 53% winning percentage means that you are a winner. So even though he had a very rough weekend, and we're going to go over that, he still stands at 53% winning clip at nine and eight. Rich, thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks for having me, Jim. Yeah, I, uh, I, I wasn't in the mood to do a show today, but, uh, per, per my obligation, yeah, I, uh, I am willing to face the music. I have to do it. This is nothing compared to what I have to do in front of my guys that are betting big money in front of the game. So, you know. Yeah. Well, yes, you do have to obligate. You did sign a one-year contract with us obligating you to be here uh, every week. So, um, you, uh, you met your obligations under the contract. Yeah. I, I want to hear about how it went with your, with your guys. Um, but, uh, how, how does that, I mean, like I said, this is, this is the first really bad weekend that, that you've had. I know you're licking your wounds. Um, how are you feeling? Uh, I feel like shit. Um, you know, nothing worse than wearing a collar and going over three. But, you know, I, I, if I go back over my history, there's at least one 0 and three week. And even the best years I've had, there's at least one 0 and three in there. Um, the, the thing that I guess upsets me most about it is i mean I, I mean yes i'm still profitable and so forgetting about the zero and three and the the three and oh i had two weeks prior and all that stuff is the that uh you know i i did take a week off last week and i had a a, a pool of of five games and and three of them won and two of them lost but i was on the sidelines and and uh, but, uh, you know, I did that because um, I, I'm always looking to the future and I'm always looking to put the best product out there I can. And uh, this week I, I had a, a similar situation where I had a, a pool of five games. And uh, unfortunately, four of those five games were losers, but there was a winner in there. And I'm pulling three out of this five. Why couldn't at least one of them winners been in my group of three? You know, right. some, of it's, uh, some of it's some bad luck. Uh, you know, uh, you have to assume that that over the course of a, of, of a season that that you're going to lose some breaks, you're going to get some breaks, and all this will balance out. So, Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get into that, uh, into the three games in a second. But, yeah, you, you started off the season on fire. I've got it jotted down here. Two and one, two and one, three and oh, one and one, and now hitting a little rough spot where, where you did one and two, and then we had last week where we uh, you didn't have a play, and then oh and three this past weekend, making you nine and eight for the season. Um, it's interesting – it's kind of a statistical oddity as far as your, the winning clip that you have to have in order to at least break even. Uh, it's 52.39. I was just doing the math on that again, because if you, if you go 11 and 10, right, your 10 losses at 110 each, let's say you bet a hundred bucks a game, you're going to be down 1100. And uh, if you win a hundred a game and you go 11 and 10, you're going to be at 1100, right? So that's 11 and 10 is the clip that you need to go at to break even, which comes out to 52.39% for, for betters to have to hit. So that's why at nine and eight, 
uh, you're you're still in in the red. Yeah, the black, yeah. If you're uh, yeah, if you're if you break even in wins and losses, technically you're a loser. You have to be a, a game ahead. Uh, at least up till 10 games. That's when uh, right. that, that 10th game becomes an 11th game. That 10th loss becomes an 11th loss. But, you know, yeah. I, I will say this, that, uh, you know, I, I, I read a book on quantum physics, and it was applied to nothing but NFL point spreads. Do you, you, know, you know how long NFL point spreads have been around? Uh, well, uh, as, as, lo as long as the NFL's been around, probably. Well, in a sense, around 1950, a uh, mathematics uh, teacher in Connecticut invented the NFL point spread. He went on to become a bookie in Chicago. Not surprising. Um, but uh, but he did a study or uh, he didn't do the study, but some uh, mathematician at Ivy League school did a study and, and it, it showed that that when sample sizes are large enough that, that all numbers will balance out eventually, you know? And uh, I, I know what that sample size is. I'm not going to share that for proprietary reasons, but um, so far in this NFL season, it's been very strange. There, it, it hasn't balanced at all. Um, we talked last week about the fact that uh, road favorites uh, went 12 and 0. And uh, through the first four games this week, road favorites had won their first four going into the, the Sunday night uh, Jets at Pittsburgh game. You know, whether the Jets deserve to be favored in that game or not, I don't know. It was because of the Devontae Adams trade that swayed the line to the Jets' side. But, uh, but no, there, there hasn't been the typical balance that you would see through, through seven weeks in the NFL this season. But yet still uh, here I sit on the, you know, on the plus side, barely head, head above water, but – I'm still on the plus side without the balance. So I yeah, no, have it, to believe. It, it, go ahead. I, I have to believe that as the, the season goes on, that these these numbers will continue to to fall more in, in line with uh with where they should be. Yeah, I, I mean it is amazing how the free market works. I'm a huge fan of the free market. And I think that lines are one of the best examples of how a free market works. And, you know, people talk about free markets being a perfect market and that really these lines essentially are perfect market. If you look, his, yes, you're going to have short term trends. And that's what you're pointing out now. Anytime you flip a coin, occasionally you're going to get five heads in a row. But over statistically, if, it, essentially, it's going to even out. And these lines tend to even out in all respects. So you can't look historically and say, you know what? Home teams tend to cover the line more than road teams. Nope. Favorites tend to cover the line more than underdogs. Nope. Everything over time balances out. So there really is no trend that you can point to when it comes to point spreads that, that work out over the, over the long haul. Right. That's that's absolutely correct. There there are short term trends or smaller trends, and you know there's a there's a trend for everything. There's people that specialize in trends, and and I I get it. It's gimmicky. People love to follow trends. You know, when this team's a home team on Monday night, they they covered uh, you know fifteen of the last sixteen times they play. You know what? Whatever. You know that, right. that means a, a, a hill of beans, but. Um, yeah, I, I I do believe that uh, that that with uh, with a little balance, with a, a luck on my side, and and teams uh, falling where they 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 should fall as the season goes on, that that I'll I'll reach my approximately sixty five percent win percentage, and and all will be good. I mean. I've only played six weeks. We have eleven more weeks to go, so there's a there's a long way for for me to go. Um, on top of that, yeah. I uh, I was sitting here and was I was waiting for this uh, this uh, recording to take place, and I was looking at the matchups next week, and I'm 
I'm shaking my head because I'm I'm thinking OMG. I mean, I could end up with uh, another round of ugly games next week, and that's the last thing I I like to do coming off an zero and three week. Just not from from the way I feel about it, but just from the 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 clientele and how they feel about it because everybody hates betting on bad teams uh, it's just it's not fun you know it doesn't mean they're not going to cover but it's not fun betting on bad teams but i but, see where this is going you're already leaning to a, another carolina play uh um, let, let's let, let, let's let's dig in let's dig into the games uh real, real quick that, that, that we had because carolina was in it uh, but it started with the Thursday night game, which was uh, Denver and New Orleans. Uh, the game was at New Orleans, right? And they were getting, yeah. and they were getting three at home against Denver, which is a little bit of a surprising line because neither team has been great shakes uh, this year. But New Orleans, David Carr has been injured, so they had their backup quarterback who had first entered the game the prior week. And, and uh, seemed to play okay, but you know you had a major injury in this game, and it caused me to wonder about your system, because I know your system is somewhat agnostic to what's going on with the team, and and um, you know it, it can pick a crappy team just as well as it can pick a good team because it's all based on your algorithms and the line being off, but that line is going to be off for sure because. They don't have their starting quarterback. So, well, yes, your, but, so let me just, let me just finish and ask the question. So what? So how does your algorithm take into consideration when, of course, the line is moved and seems to be very good for New Orleans because they don't have their starting quarterback? How does your algorithm take into consideration that? My algorithm doesn't take that into consideration. The actual point spread itself should take that into consideration. People know that the, the starting quarterback's out, so therefore the line should adjust accordingly. So, well, and it does, but sorry, I thought that, you're, that the way you do it is your algorithm basically looks at what the line is relative to where it should be, and then you bet accordingly. If you find a line that is off for – you know, because people are juiced up on on Kansas City because they're the hot team and they're playing Carolina, the shitty team, and then the line tends to be off. I thought that's broadly speaking your algorithm. Well, the the algorithm picks a side. It it picks a side that's that's due to overperform versus a team that's due to underperform. It, it, so I, what I the line? I, just so I clear. So what the line is has nothing to do with how you pick is that correct no that's correct okay so you you've got a team like new orleans who's due to overperform denver due to underperform let's just say because you picked new orleans yet new orleans doesn't have their starting quarterback so right. why wouldn't that come into the mix then at that point because the, the the books who are setting the lines should take into account that, hey, you know, and, and the, this is another thing we can get into a little more. But, but uh, you know, if, if David Carr's in there, maybe that game's a pick em, But because Carr's not playing, it's a three-point game uh, favored by Denver. But uh, I, I, I need accurate lines on games. That's one thing that my algorithm counts on. I need an accurate line on a game, and I need my team to uh, perform to the best of its ability. Uh, that's two things that my algorithm takes into consideration. Okay, and but hold on a second. If, if they're missing their starting quarterback – I guess you're saying that, well, the line has already counted for that. I've gotten an extra three points for that. I'm going to assume that was the proper value for the quarterback being out, and therefore everything else should still apply, right? That's that's correct. Um, but unfortunately, in, in that game, you didn't get the, the the best performance out of New Orleans. They they. They made the same mistakes that they seem to make all the time, where their their tackling was horrendous. They they dropped uh, balls that should have been completions. Their defense dropped interceptions. They they played as 
but it was bad as a team could play. I mean, it was like they wanted the, their coach to get fired in that game. I mean, that's that's the effort yeah. that they no, were for. No, you're right about that. They looked they looked terrible. The missed tackles were just ridiculous. Uh, I mean, that would be a tough team to bet on again, even though uh, I have a feeling that could be coming up soon. So, but just before we move on to the next game, though, just to wrap up on the quarterback, that because look. The quarterback compared to any position in any sport, any team sport, right? It's the most important position. Maybe, well, maybe safe for the pitcher in baseball, but it's, it's certainly similar to the pitcher in baseball. So when they don't have their their starting quarterback and the, the guy that's replacing him, I think the guy is essentially, isn't he a rookie or he's a second year guy? Anyway, uh, very little yeah. too, Rattler. Rattler, yeah. I'm not sure if he's a rookie or second year guy. But I mean, uh, that that wouldn't just be an automatic, you know what? I'm gonna toss that one out because they don't have the starting quarterback. And that's just too significant for me to take a chance on. Well, no, I mean, we, we could use the example that we've done on air where you know I I picked Carolina uh what the first couple weeks, and that was my only loss I had during those weeks, but we came back and picked Carolina a third time after they benched their starting quarterback, and we won that game. So, you know, who, who's to say that uh, that those extra points you get from having a, a backup quarterback are are not going to be enough to win the game? You know, I don't. Yeah. I don't well, know. although it's the difference between a team shaking thing. I, I get your analogy, but. It's a team that the quarterback was underperforming and they bench him and now, you know, they should theoretically be reinvigorated and do better versus holy cow, our superstar quarterback is gone and now we're stuck with this uh, first year guy. Yeah. Um, and again, we, we, we haven't addressed the, the, the San Francisco game yet, but I, I've been saying ever since. Purdy had taken over as a starting quarterback. I mean, they had Trey Lance, they had Jimmy G, and then here comes this Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, who uh last man taken in the draft, and, and he goes out there and he's he's playing like uh Joe Namath or Dan Marino. You know, I mean, this guy's incredible. Um, and it, it hasn't really been until uh this year or you know, maybe uh, towards the end of last year that, that the guys looked uh, fallible, you know, so. Yeah, well, Rattler did have a surprisingly bad game. It was interesting that for the final, he, he got a little bit injured, and so they put in his backup, forget the guy's name, and he leads him down the field to a touchdown. And now all of a sudden they have a quarterback controversy about uh, who's going to be the uh, former backup and now starter. Well, yeah, I mean, this – Again, this this can lead me into a, a whole another thing. I, I I don't know that the books are properly valuing teams that are undermanned. Uh, it seems to me in the past that, uh, you know, if you go from a Derek Carr to a Rattler, uh, you're, you're going to get more of a bump in the line. You're going to get more than a field goal out of it. Um, but you know, here's where the, the, the market has evolved, where the books used to have to make their money on the sides or the totals. I mean, those were the two main ways books made money on football games. But now with the, the in-game betting with the 35 to 40 cent lines on these games, the single game parlays where they're, they're paying you – a couple hundred less than they should on a fourteen hundred dollar wager. They're they're making so much more money in other ways that I just don't know that they're they're accurately lining these games, um, oh, which man. which could be problematic. <clears throat> we'll we'll see. You know, but all right, let's move on to um, the next one, which is Carolina, Washington. You were, uh, I think, one and two so far on Carolina. We talked about that and you you went yeah. with them again. Um, I took two out of your three plays, Rich. 
Carolina, Washington, I couldn't go with you. I had to go against you because I've just been amazed by this Washington quarterback. I think that he's just totally invigorated this team. They were coming off a, a, a loss, which I consider to be a good thing to rebound after a loss. It was at Baltimore where they actually played Baltimore pretty close. And uh, this quarterback is just on fire and the franchise is super excited. Everybody's all jazzed. And uh, even though Washington was giving up, I think, nine or ten points, I just had to go Washington. And uh, fortunately, it was a winner for me, but a loser for you. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and uh, Jane Daniels even got knocked out of the game. And uh, it, it didn't seem That's to right. You know what? I didn't see that game. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. I didn't even, I didn't see the game and I didn't find out until afterwards. I, I just said, Oh my God, the guy had another amazing game, but uh, yeah, he was placed by Mariota in, in what the first quarter. Yeah. Yeah. And, and which is, you know, that's an amazing sign for that team, right? Because a lot of times you don't really know, is this guy really an amazing quarterback or is there something about their offense this year or something about their offensive line? And usually it is a combination because you don't have a strong offensive line or, quarterbacks coach offensive coordinator I don't care how good the quarterback is he's gonna look like shit and a lot of people always blame it on the quarterback and you don't realize what's really going on here Daniels has been getting all this credit everybody wants to make the guy MVP he leaves the game and Mariota ends up having an amazing game in his play so who knows what's yeah. really going on there in Washington yeah you you wouldn't have done the difference uh Mariota went out there like he was the man and and continued to march that team down the field and score points so they didn't miss a beat. Yeah. And what's uh, have you heard? What What's the report on Daniels? Is he just missing? Um, he, is he going to be uh, playing he, next week? He, he, it's, it's, they're uncertain at this point. Uh, they're going to do some more uh, testing. Is, uh, is, it's his ribs. Um, so uh, how fast his ribs heal, uh, they need to do some MRIs to see if there's a little more extensive damage than they first uh, originally thought, you know. But, I, I mean, initially it was just bruised ribs, but how bad they're bruised, we don't really know. By we the way, little... I know you don't really – I know you don't really take injuries into much account uh, for the reasons we've already talked about, but where is the best place to go just for a quick – analysis of who are the key players that are out i always i, I never seem to find I, I go to espn but i just don't feel like i'm getting like the latest information and i want to know like if the person is any good i don't follow the games close enough to know which players are important and which aren't you know yeah yeah you know i mean th these websites in the 20 some years i've been doing this um i, I i've been through probably 15, 20 different websites because they're, they're constantly changing. Some are, are going out of business, new ones are coming on. So, um, yeah, I, I just generally uh, use my phone and do a, a, a voice search and see what pops up. So, but he, like, here's my point you know, it's going to tell you probable, questionable, doubtful, or out, right? But when yeah. I see that list, I don't know who these guys are. <laughs> You know, other than the quarterback and maybe a key running back, I see these names. Is this cornerback really good? I, I I'd like a, a site that would tell me if this is a sub substantial, you know, in, player or not. Yeah, and I'm I'm being a little protective about the sites I use because I get a lot of my data off of some of these sites. And again, I'm I'm protecting myself a little bit here, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just keep searching around with the different uh, sports sites. You'll you'll find a site that uh, that'll show you. And what what the key is generally on the site is it it should show you uh, like a date when they were when they were placed on this injured list, uh, so you can know. What site that's going to tell me? Uh, what's the site that's going to tell me is the guy any good? <laughs> and and by the way, by the way, I just thought of this. Not only how good was the guy, but who is the backup, right? This would be really yeah. helpful information. And I don't know if there's a site that provides it. it. says, by the way, here's the guy. Here's how good he was. and But here's the backup. And, and here's the difference between them. Yeah. Um, well, we can talk off air about that. Thank I, you. I, I don't, okay, I don't want to probably put that out there. All right, good. So you're telling me that a, a site exists that, that, that kind of does that. 
Yeah, it'll it'll show you uh, the injuries, their their status of the injury, when they were placed on this injury list, and who the starters were uh, the prior week. If that's of any help to you. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the last game, which this one I was 100% with you on San Francisco at home against Kansas City, a uh, replay of the Super Bowl that Kansas City won. Uh, San Francisco's at home, still don't have McCaffrey playing, but seem to have most everybody else, I think. So uh, Kansas City came in as a uh, one-point underdog, and everything seemed to be ripe for San Francisco getting a little bit of revenge. Kansas City's undefeated, doesn't really need to win the game. I didn't really get to see the game, actually, but um, I guess I got a little bit close in the third quarter, but but San Francisco uh, lost 28-18. Yeah, I uh I'll be honest with you. I uh I I watched that the the early games and once we got to the uh the, that second tier of games yesterday, I I didn't I I actually lay down and took a nap because I I was up late the night before and uh I I got up in time to see the uh the, the second half of, of those games. But uh, yeah, I mean, Kansas city and Mahomes, they're certainly not setting the, the world on fire, especially from a statistical standpoint. I mean, well, the wins and losses are, are, are perfect, but, but they, they seem to be just squeaking by. It seemed like a great opportunity for San Francisco to steal one, but, but, but Purdy, uh, turned the ball over i think he threw three picks in that game and uh um yeah i mean they they they're just not measuring up right now san francisco they certainly don't look like yeah. an nfc championship team purdy is kind of shaping up to be a guy who i think was in a great offense and a great offensive schemes and great players around him you know D debo and uh, McCaffrey and, and Kittle and so on. And almost like, you know, you could have plugged any quarterback into that who would have done well, as opposed to Purdy being truly an exceptional quarterback himself. Mahomes, Brady, you know, we all know they're awesome. There's no doubt about that. A guy like Purdy seems to me, if he doesn't have every, everything going around him, he, he, this guy is not an exceptional quarterback. Yeah, I, uh, uh, that that's the way I expected it to be from the start. But yeah, I think you're right. I think that you could take a, uh, an average quarterback and, and put him on a good team and it makes him seem like he's much better than he actually is. But now that, that San Francisco has some deficiencies around Purdy, you're starting to see uh, what, what Purdy can do. I heard the announcers say during a break that, uh, that that San Francisco is going to require more out of Purdy now um, <laughs> to, uh, to to make this team function offensively. Well, let's stay on the subject of quarterbacks as we talk about our last game. The one bright spot for you over the weekend, your Pittsburgh Steelers romping over what I'm going to officially now call the lowly New York Jets, a team that is just a disaster. Uh, I, I won that bet. I did take Pittsburgh. I've been pretty much betting against the Jets for a while. You and I've been debating whether or not Aaron Rodgers is still Aaron Rodgers or not. And I've been arguing that he, that he isn't, and that the offense is just in total disarray. So everybody just assumed that they pick up Devonte Adams and that's going to turn everything around. But, you know, I don't know what the, in fact, maybe, you know, I don't know what the problem was with Adams in it with the Raiders. I know there was some issue there, but that you could, have a guy fly on a red eye flight on a Monday night and then be ready to play on Sunday in a, in a totally different offense and have it turn everything around. I just wasn't buying it. And so yet another miserable performance by the jets and not a great performance by Rogers. Well, the, the reason that Devonte Adams wanted out of green Bay was because he wasn't happy with Jordan Love and the amount of throws or catches he was getting. And 
So he wanted to, Aaron Rodgers wasn't an option for him because the Jets had spent a fortune getting him. So the second best option for him was his college quarterback, who was Derek Carr at Fresno State. So that's why the Raiders made a deal to bring Devontae in. But then what happens, Derek Carr gets benched and traded away from the Raiders. And so Devontae's left with uh, Aiden O'Connell and Gordon Minshew trying to get him the ball, and he's not going to get anything that way. You know, they're lucky they can get a ball out to a tight end, let alone a wide receiver. So, um, well, yeah. the old magic it didn't. So, anyway, I didn't know that background, so that's good to know. But the old magic didn't magically return last night. No, it, it didn't. And, uh, you know, Going into that game, I, I I was thinking, you know, here's a game that the, the Jets are probably going to to win. the The Steelers did something surprising. You you take a quarterback that's led you to a four and two start. That's got six touchdowns, one pick, is ran for God knows how many hundreds of yards and and touchdowns, and you bench him. Uh, to bring in the old man Russell Wilson, and I, I, I didn't like the move on the front end. I'll be honest, I didn't like that move at all. But, uh, but one thing I'll say about that game um, that Russell Wilson did throw the ball down the field. Granted, some of those catches Pickens made last night were circus acts. Um, but, uh, but it, it does stretch out a defense. I've always wondered about these teams that run the ball and throw short passes that the defensive containment can stay all closer to the line, but you throw the ball down the field, you got to stretch them out. And, and Russell Wilson was able to do that. Yeah. And by the way, I think that's been one of the issues with Rogers. He's all about the sidearm flicking the ball, you know, eight yards down the field. He hasn't been hitting, you know, long passes that I've seen. And in fact, he had a couple passes knocked down because he's constantly doing the sidearm pass. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but, well, it's a, it's a ploy that teams use when they generally don't have a lot of uh, uh, offensive protection from their line. They, they feel that they got to get the ball out quick and, that doesn't give you a lot of time to to throw the ball way down the field. So, yeah, um, yeah, no, I think he's like number two or number three as far as getting the ball out, and that's great. Brady was always great at getting the ball out, but if he also can't hit him downfield, that's a problem. But but yeah, back to Russell Wilson. I kind of trust Tomlin. I just think the guy's a great coach, and he's proven it with his ongoing success. And my feeling was that okay, if they're starting this guy, they must feel very good about him. You know, I don't think they would have started him. You know, like you said, Fields was doing fine. They must have felt good. Him. I don't think he had an amazing game, uh, but they certainly put points on the board. And uh, he looked pretty good, looked a little bit rusty. But uh, they're in a great situation right now, pretty much having two guys that are equally good. So they're poised. Well, yeah, to be in good unfortunately, shape. The, neither one of them are under contract for next season. So a decision is going to have to be made at some point. Um, but you know, I, I just have a hard time, you know, with Russell Wilson's age thinking that, you know, you're, you're going to build around him. It's almost like they're, if he plays, they're in a win now mode, or they even talked about before the game, whether they were going to, you know, swap the quarterbacks in and out, depending on the situation. And that didn't happen. Um, so I, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I think Tomlin is a, is a decent coach. I mean, you can argue that and support that by his 17 year, uh, winning record. But again, you know, if the Steelers go nine and eight during the course of the season and whether they get into the playoffs or just barely miss the playoffs, the chances are they're going to get trounced in the first round like they did last year in Buffalo, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's hard to see them as a Super Bowl contender, but uh, five and two is not too shabby. No. And they, they won their games last year, the way they won their games earlier this year, it was their defense, keeping them close and in games and, and giving them a, a shot to, to, to win it at the end. But 
if you look at the, the schedule the Steelers have played up to this point, it hasn't been very difficult. The, look at the, their, their two losses they've had have been to a Dallas team that's gotten crushed a couple times at home of late and an Indianapolis Colt team. So, I mean, really, the Steelers should be 6-0. We haven't played one conference game yet, but six of our last eight games are, are against conference opponents. So that'll tell the tale right there. And they said that's kind of what Tomlin's trying to do right now is, is what do I have here? You know, uh, you know, can, can, can Wilson still do it? You know, I've, I've seen fields for six games. Um, you know, what, who's going to be my guy moving forward? And um, I, I, at this point, I still don't think Tomlin has an answer for anybody on that. So all right, well, let's I, I, let's wrap it up on a positive note. Praise wins, 53% winning percentage on the year consistently over the past 10 or 20 years wins at an over 60% clip. So that means that he is due this weekend. So now it's a perfect time to go to Substack Handicap Hustle. Find Handicap Hustle on Substack, subscribe for free, get our newsletters and you can also subscribe and get Rich's picks for this upcoming weekend. I have a feeling he's going to turn it around big time this weekend, so it's the perfect time to jump in. Just $79 a month for Rich's three picks just about every weekend. Handicap Hustle on Substack, uh, or you can check out his website, phrasewins.com. Rich, you did it. You appeared. You held up your, your end of the bargain. On the, on, the, yeah. on our contract to appear every year, regardless of what happened in the weekend. And uh, I commend you for coming on the show and answering questions after a tough weekend. Well, I, uh, I appreciate that. The, uh, the hard parts yet in front of me, uh, I, I have to go meet some people in person and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure whether I need to bring a weapon with me or not, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see if I show up next week. Yeah, okay. Well, if you need me to uh, be by your side, I'll, I'll fly right out, Rich. I, pre I appreciate I, I, that. I think I'll scare him. Okay. All right, buddy. Thank you all for watching and listening to another episode of Handicap Hustle. We'll be back next week. Take care, everybody.